Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Let us arise and praise our God. Spring of 
Hallelujah. The Lord is risen. Hallelujah. I will declare your name to my brethren. In the midst of the assembly, I will praise you. You who fear the Lord, praise him. All you descendants of Jacob, glorify him. And fear him, all you offspring of Israel. For he has not despised, nor abhorred the affliction of the afflicted. Nor has he seen his face from him. But when he cries to him, he heard. My praise shall be of you in the great assembly. I will pay my vows before those who fear him. The poor shall eat and be satisfied. Those who seek him will praise the Lord. Let Let your heart live forever. All the ends of the world shall remember and turn to the Lord. And all the families of the nations shall worship before you. For the kingdom is the Lord's. And he rules over the nations. All the prosperous of the earth shall eat and worship. All those who go down to the depths shall bow before him. Even he cannot keep himself alive. A posterity shall serve him. It will be recounted of the Lord to the next generation. They will come and declare his righteousness to a people who will be born. That he has done this. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Hallelujah, the Lord is risen. Hallelujah. As you told you, hallelujah. Please be seated. Now the green blade rises from the buried grain. We eat that in dark earth many days has lain. Love lives again, that with the dead has been. Love is come again, like wheat arising green. In the grave they laid him, love by hatred slain. Thinking that he would never wake again. Laid in the earth, like grain that sleeps unseen. Love is come again, like wheat arising green. Forth he came at Easter, like the risen grain. He that for three days in the grave had lain, raised from the dead, my living Lord is seen. Love is come again, like wheat arising green. When our hearts are wintry, grieving or in pain, your touch can call us back to life again. Fields of our hearts that dead and bare have been. Love is come again like wheat arising green. Christ is risen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Our reading this morning is recorded for us in the Gospel according to St. John, verses 1 through 18. <clears throat> On the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb early while it was still dark and saw that the stone had been taken away from the tomb. Then she ran and came to Simon Peter and the other disciple whom Jesus loved and said to them, they have taken away the Lord out of the tomb and we do not know where they have laid him. Peter therefore went out and the other disciple and were going to the tomb. So they both ran together and the other disciple outran Peter and came to the tomb first. And he, stooping down and looking in, saw the linen cloths lying there. Yet he did not go in. 
Then Simon Peter came following him and went into the tomb. And he saw the linen cloths lying there and the handkerchief that had been around his head, not lying with the linen cloths, but folded together in a place by itself. Then the other disciple who came to the tomb first went in also and he saw and believed. For as yet, they did not know the scripture that he must rise again from the dead. Then the disciples went away again to their own houses. But Mary stood outside by the tomb weeping. And as she wept, she stooped down and looked into the tomb. And she saw two angels in white sitting, one at the head and the other at the feet, where the body of Jesus had lain. Then they said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, Because they have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. Now when she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, and did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you seeking? She, supposing him to be the gardener, said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him, Rabboni, which is to say, teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not cling to me, for I have not yet ascended to my father, but go to my brethren and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and to your Father and to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene came and told the disciples that she had seen the Lord and that he had spoken these things to her. Here ends the reading. Dear fellow redeemed by the blood of the risen Lamb of God, grace, mercy, and peace are yours in abundance from God, our Heavenly Father, and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Brothers and sisters, the words on which we meditate this morning are the latter portion of the reading that you have just heard. Let us pray. Now may the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. So Mary came to the tomb and when she went to the disciples, she speaks we in the plural. So obviously as John records it, he's focusing on Mary, but the others were with her initially and the way it threads through, um, she, they went and told Peter and John. Peter and John ran there. The ladies make their way back to the tomb, or at least Mary Magdalene does. And the disciples go away. And, you know, as you follow the story on, the disciples are still scratching their heads and having trouble believing all of this. It's no wonder that today, in our day and age, people have trouble believing all of this. But if we treat the text fairly and treat this history the way we treat the rest of history in a fair-minded manner and on an equal basis, we come away going, you know, this really happened. This is really true. And when we look at John's focus on Mary Magdalene, 
should pause and consider just the name for a moment. And there's a, there's a satire little video that was made up that's floating around the internet that talks about, you know, if you're gonna make up a story, this one doesn't make sense because if you're gonna make it up, are you gonna have Mary, 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 and uh, Mary as the people that are involved? What's up with this name Mary? It's a very interesting name. And it's an ancient name. It carries us all the way back. And if you've been at the various, various services this week, especially Monday, Thursday, Good Friday, and Holy Saturday, which the three together we call the, the triduum. We don't do it technically the way it's customarily done in the Christian church. Our Tenebrae Good Friday service is a little bit different than others do. And I speak the, uh, the benediction, which if you're being technically correct historically, it's one service that goes for three days. So you never hear the benediction. You just keep going and going until you get to that benediction last evening. But in any case, you heard some things about the Exodus a couple of times over these last three days. And the name Mary, Miriam, Mary, all the way back there, when baby Moses, by his mother, was placed in an ark, in a basket covered with pitch, just like Noah and the ark, but a smaller version of that now, right? And placed in the reeds, and who was there to watch over him? Mary, Miriam, Mary, okay? And then you, you go forward into time, to that woman whom our mother, the Holy Christian Church, gave into the hands of Mary to guard and protect in his infancy the one who would lead through the waters, Christ our Savior. Then we come to this Mary who in a garden is called woman. You see some connections there and God controlling salvation history. I don't think these things are exactly accidental. That repetition of Mary, 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 Mary over and over in the scriptures brings our focus to a certain point, doesn't it? And the name, what in the world does it mean? Yeah, what in the world does it mean? Sea of bitterness? Who would ever name their child that? No. No, it means beloved. Uh-huh. It's all how you're reading it. It's a remarkable name. When you go all the way back to the children of Israel in Egypt, about to be led out of their slavery, and this one given to watch over their deliverer at that time, Moses, who was named Sea of Bitterness, Beloved. God loves the one who encompasses the bitterness. And then Mary, that chosen woman, the woman of women. Sea of Bitterness, no, the beloved, the truly beloved. Mary Magdalene, out of whom Jesus cast seven demons there in the garden looking for her deliverer, trying to watch over him, and oops, he's not there, and she's in tears, supposing him to be the gardener. Ironically, he is the gardener, isn't he? He is the one who so many centuries ago came in the cool of the day looking for his beloved. Where are you? What kind of game are you playing? What's going on? Why are you hiding? And her husband spoke on her behalf. We heard your voice. 
We were naked and afraid, and we hid. And the gardener said, I'm going to make this right. Serpent, demon, you have come and put separation between me and my bride. I'm going to crush your head. I am going to put separation between you and her. And here, this woman was separated from seven demons, servants of that great demon, that serpent, Satan. There was the gardener. There he was. Why are you crying? And when he says, Mary, it's not, O oh, sea of bitterness. It's Mary, my beloved. Why are you crying? I am here. And so it is to this day. Why do we bother to gather together early in the morning and rejoice because Christ is risen? He is risen indeed. That's why the gardener is still speaking to his beloved. Don't cry. But you can't cling to me. I am yours. I will always be with you. I will always be among you. But I have to ascend to my Father so that I can sprinkle all nations. Go and tell them. Go and tell them. My beloved, speak on my behalf. Tell them. It's just as it was prophesied. Just as I, through the prophets, century after century, said, I'm going to rise again. It's true. It's happened. And I'm going to ascend to my Father to bless this work of sharing this joyful news. This is our joy, that the gardener is alive. The gardener is among us, even as he has ascended on high to govern all things that our joy might be full and that we might participate in the joy in telling others yet in our day. But we're not alone. He's not dead. He is risen. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Let us arise and praise him.
we continue with the Kyrie hymn. Through the same Jesus Christ, thy Son, our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee and the Holy Ghost, ever one God, world without end. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, almighty and everlasting God, who has brought us safely to the beginning of this day, Defend us in the same with thy mighty power, and grant that this day we fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger, but that all our doings being ordered by thy governance may be righteous in thy sight. Through Jesus Christ, thy Son, our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee and the Holy Ghost, ever one God, world without end.
Alleluia. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Ghost be with you all. Amen.